Oh, it's gone. <laughs> it wasn't working down here, and so Randall tied it up there closer to being outside, and now it works. Upon arriving to the Hurricane Hole Marina, we were greeted by a man by the name of John Conway. He was impressed to see that we had come all the way from the Northwest and personally invited us to visit his resort. Just up the road, there's a resort, a really exclusive resort called the One and Only Ocean Club. And we met one of the gentlemen who works there or manages runs the it. place, manages the place. Yeah, he, uh, he was at the dock when we showed up, and uh, he's from the Northwest too, just like us. And uh, we got to chatting a little bit, and he he recognized it on a tiny boat, and we just came into a marina with no facilities. He offered a day pass for us at his resort, and uh, so we went and uh, we tried to keep it real low key and stay out of their way, but we just went in and used their uh, showers at the uh, what do you call? Gym. The gym, yeah, like the, the, the fitness, tennis courts the and the fitness center. center, yeah. Oh man, some of the nicest facilities I've ever been to. No, hands down, ten times nicer than any place I've been in my life. Yep. No joke, it was that nice. We felt very underdressed. I didn't, I was actually in nice clothes. <laughs> I had like a nice shirt on and I, yeah, it, I, I was feeling great though. But again, the food was a little too pricey. It was actually not too bad there. But we were feeling really poor because we knew we were paying a hundred bucks a night, which for us is crazy expensive. Thirty bucks a night is a lot for us at a marina. So uh, we didn't eat there, even though it looked really delicious. But the people were so nice, and the place is gorgeous. There's ruins there from Paris or something, and it was incredible. We can't thank John enough for giving us the opportunity to experience the one and only Ocean Club and would love to visit again someday. The following day we visited the Atlantis Water Park one last time before leaving Hurricane Hole Marina and getting fuel at the fuel dock. While getting fuel at the fuel dock, the chain holding the cap to the fuel tank broke, causing it to fall into the water. Just to be safe, we plugged the fuel deck opening with an orange plug so no salt water could get inside the fuel tank, and Randall was luckily able to dive down to the bottom of the bay to retrieve the cap. After we got fuel, we headed out of the east entrance to Nassau Harbor toward the anchorage on the south side of Rose Island. There's a lot of rocks and shallows in that area you have to dodge, and they're not all that clearly marked on some of the charts. We used a combination of three different chart systems and got a pretty good idea of the spots to avoid. The charts for here actually suck. Maybe that's like an extension of this one? This one, and I should not cross over that. chart? Yeah, no, they're here. They're just not expecting to be that close.
Rose Island is a great stopover if you're coming to or leaving from Nassau. And it even makes a great alternative to Nassau if you aren't in need of any of Nassau's amenities. There's great anchorages on the north and the south side. The north side has really great reefs and nice beaches where the south side really only has a protected anchorage. We'll be staying at Rose Island for a couple of days and then catching a favorable wind to the Exumas. We can't wait to see what the next leg of our adventure has in store for us.